Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. I'm aware I've had quite a few new subscribers recently. This is the next uh, episode in the Seiko 6309 giveaway series. Uh, this is a watch I'm restoring uh, to give away to one of you lucky subscribers. And it's been going on for months and we're getting towards the end now. And this is part two of the case restoration. So we've prepared in the last video this particular case uh, to um, get it looking reasonable, ready for the final polishing, etc. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I am going to literally jump straight in and I'm going to go with the uh, or show you what I do to produce a brushed finish because that's what we want to put on this top part of the case. And to do that, I'm just using a type of Scotch Brite. This is uh, from a manufacturer I know through my day job. It's called uh, Merca. You can get this online. I do have some of these on my website also as an affiliate link, uh, which I do get a kickback on. And there is another one. So we've got two grades. I've got the purple, which is uh, in this instance is very fine, and the grey here is ultra fine, which is UF there. And there are obviously other manufacturers for this stuff, plenty available, but you do want to try and get some of the fine. Um, buying the coarse will be too coarse, just that it'll uh, it'll make the thing look pretty pretty tatty. So I do recommend these ones because they give me pretty good results. Now, it is just a woven material with some abrasive in it. And the good thing that I found for this is because these sort of cases are, as you can see, they've got this slight contour to them. And trying to do it sort of, you know, with your fingers would be very, very difficult. This, because it's got some give in it, what you're gonna find is when you press it in, uh, it's gonna sort of cover the whole of the contours. And that's what I've learned uh, fairly recently, to be honest. Now what I've done is put some Captain Tape around the edges. The edges are gonna be fine polished in a little bit, along with the bevel. I've tried to mask that as best I can. And that's just to help because, you know, we've got this looking pretty good. Uh, using this might mean that I would, if, well, sorry, if I, if I didn't put the tape on and use this, it would scuff the sides up again, which means I'd have to try and do those again. Now, doing the brushed and the um, polished can be a little bit of a cat and mouse um, because you can slightly overlap the two and you might need to do a few final tweaks right at the end. Uh, but that's the compromise you get in trying to do it at home. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the um, case down onto the, uh, well, hand pad. I'm not going to call it Scotch Bright because that's a trademark. And we're just literally going to, I'm going to press it in a bit and I'm going to drag it through the material, as you can hear and see. Now, I'm not just dragging it, I'm sort of angling it forwards a little bit. So I'm doing that a little bit because obviously the case has got this sort of round shape to it. So as you can see, it sounds awful. It might be a good idea to try and equalize some of your strokes, certainly towards the end, you might want to be counting them. But at the moment, we're just trying to apply the first bit of the finish. Now, hopefully that can start coming out on the camera. I can just see it here looking. So you can already see that some of the lines are looking pretty uniform, and that's what you want. Now, if you remember, there was some scuffs on this one just in there, I don't know whether you can see that in the light. Well, there were pits, I couldn't get out, so they will be slightly exposed. This side is a little bit better. I'm not worried about rounding off in here because the um, bezel is gonna sit in there and hide any of that. And we might get a little bit on the end here, but that's just a compromise, and once we've got a strap in it, you won't see it. So this is where the prep work really does come in that if you've done everything right to start with to try and remove those scratches, this process here should be very quick and very straightforward. Uh, 
and again there we go with some more strokes and with my eyes they look pretty good already um, now the reason I've got another grade is depends on on the on the look that you're going for I haven't really got much of a reference on this uh, the, the coarser version gives some nicer lines or a coarser brushing really I guess is probably what you could say uh, and obviously using a finer one is just going to tone those down a little bit um, the great reveal is once you've polished it and you, then you take the tape off of you put on the top here it then shows just how good or bad it, it, it's you've got it uh, or how accurate um, I'm just going to keep cutting this just a few more times on this particular one Now you do want to try and keep that going as straight as you can. If you're grinding at an angle, it probably doesn't matter so much on this, but you've, you, you, you need to keep it as straight because then your lines are going to be uniform. If you're trying to move in this sort of manner, then it's not going to look uh, as attractive. Now I will do it just without digging in. And that is just to try and get these little tiny side pieces you could are barely visible really but they would show up at the end so already as far as i'm concerned whoops i didn't get it in the camera there the uh, brushing on that is quite nice now i will swap it over to the finer one because I do feel it should be just that little bit finer. And let's see if on camera at least we can spot the difference. Now I'm doing this I've lost uh, I've lost count. <laughs> but never mind. So let's see if we'll be able to tell. The light is too reflective, isn't it? That's the trouble. So that's the end we've just done, and this is the coarser end. So you can't tell there, but I can tell with my eyes, and this is the right one to go with. I do have one that's even finer than this, um, but for the finish we're after, it's, that's not one that I would be using. So if you're going to try this yourself, then um, you know, find out what works for you. Um, you know different grade or you know spending more time doing it I tend to find the less is best really the less you're taking off the better it's going to look so already to me I'm perfectly happy with that it is really a shame that it's showing these pit marks I wish I could get that in the light for you um, but that is going to be the compromise as I keep saying but that is looking quite nice so far. I'll just do a little bit more. It's even a good way to freshen up um, a case, even if you don't want to take the scratches off, but you just want to put a bit of brushing back on, which I've done in the past. Uh, it will hide some very, very light scratching or even remove some of the light ones as well. So there we are. Right now I'm perfectly happy with that. I think that's great. And we're going to move on to the polishing stage. So I'm going to set up uh, for that now, uh, get all my stuff out, and I'll talk you through what I'm going to do and what I'm going to use, because there's quite a lot to talk about there. Uh, and then, of course, I'll do it. So uh, with a click of my fingers, you will then be seeing this all set up. OK, so I've got all the bits out now that I want to show you first before we actually start polishing. And um, if you've seen some of my other polishing videos, then this will be uh, just repeating myself really. But for all of those new guys who may not have seen those videos, uh, this is basically how I do it. Um, I do know a little bit about abrasives. It's what I do in my day job. And um, I found a, a particular brand which is good and a method which is good. So with uh, polishing the main thing you need is the uh, right uh, type of uh, polishing mops or, or 
attachments for your tool depending on what you're going to be doing and then the most important thing as well is the compound so there are lots of different brands out there there's some cheap stuff there's some more expensive the stuff that I use and would highly recommend is a brand called Menzerna. It's used in um, like for bright work, finishing on cars, for chrome and things like that. So it is up there with the best. You can buy stuff like this, uh, Dialux, which I started out on. This is for the hobbyist. Lots of different colours. The colours denote different things and it looks a bit like that. And to be fair, this was adequate, but I found switch into Menzerna a lot better. There's a few places you can get Menzerna online, uh, one of which is Cousins, of course, um, here in the UK, and you can find them online quite easily. So uh, the method in polishing to uh, what I know is I'm, I use a four stage. Sounds extreme, I'm gonna go through four, four different compounds and four different wheels. And it's not just like you don't want a different wheel for cross-contamination of the um, compound, it's the different densities of the wheels depending on what you're trying to do. Now, the first one we would start on um, is this particular one here. It's all very dark. And if you're using a polishing machine, which I've got a little bench grinder, you do use a wheel not dissimilar to this, which is called a sisal, which is made out of fiber uh, I can't remember the plant this is made out of, uh, um, but if any of you play darts, it's a dartboard material. That's basically what that is, and it's stitched together to keep it tough. And this gets under quite a lot of scratches, actually. Uh, it's very uh, abrasive, but coupled that with the compound itself. Now, I've bought this compound from a particular company here in the UK, and fortunately they labelled their um, packets, which I've kept. And this is a great uh, thing for us to talk about here because you'll understand it a little bit better. Uh, so it's telling us here, use it on a size or mop. Well, okay, that's fine. If you're using a rotary tool like I'm going to be doing today, um, I want to use a rotary tool purely because if you're having a go with this for the first time, you can buy one of these for nothing money, $20, $20 £20, and the attachments are fairly cheap too. But you can't find, or I can't find, a sisal type mop on a little mandrel like that. Um, so I use felt, so these little felt um, bobs because they're quite hard and you can buy those in different shapes. There's a thin one there. So they come in a variety of things, but you want the hard ones for this particular um, compound. So go back to the label again. So it's telling us here it's cut factor eight and gloss factor three. So that's kind of all you need to know. So that's your start one. Uh, the next one down is this green coloured one, if I can get it out. So you can kind of see it here. And if you're using a machine, you then use what's called a stitched mop. This is just pieces of cotton. There's layers of cotton. You can see I've well used this, but there are sort of layers and layers and layers of cotton in there, stitched together with lots of stitching, and that makes that quite stiff. And the green Menzerna, you may want to take a note of some of these codes as well, that might be significant. It's telling you here that it's a cut factor of seven and a gloss factor of five. So as you can see, we're getting more shinier, less cutting. And that's how it sort of carries on. So the, the following one is this light colored blue compound. And this is used uh, with a, an open cotton wheel. Just loose, loose leaf one like that. And that is a cut factor four and a gloss factor eight. So at this point, you're getting pretty shiny indeed. And the last compound is used with a just a cotton, very light cotton. You can see it's soft. And this has a cut factor of one and a gloss factor of nine. So it's a very hard compound, this one. And uh, you don't need a lot of it. And it's just really for giving it that final brightness. And hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate these in due course. Um, so I was gonna talk about the, the other attachments that I was gonna use. So I'm gonna start off 
with the cotton because it's bit, uh, sorry the the felt because it's quite hard uh, because I haven't got uh, a stitched uh, mop I will be using one like this oh I've made a mistake there actually what am I talking about I tend to use a felt bob on this one and a felt one on this one and then for this one I've got this loose leaf now, this is brand new so when I do use it you'll see that the cotton will go everywhere so if you're doing this by your workbench uh, make sure that it's all covered up uh, because you don't want this floating around all over your watches and then the last one is the, the the fine fluffy cotton one as you can see here and likewise this one is going to make a heck of a mess certainly when they're new I have got some uh, used ones which I would normally use but I want to try it with some new ones today so we're going to go through all of those seems very laborious um, but it shouldn't take too long again it's all about the prep so as long as you've got your your working surfaces here uh, as good as you think they can be then this should be relatively quickly um, the only difficulty I'm going to have is again I've got that bezel I have been tempted to mask off here as well and do the bezel but I thought first of all I'll just try this edge and I'll either do the bezel uh, while we're going along or I will uh, do it um, afterwards uh, the main thing at the moment is to try not to make the video too long but enough for you to get the understanding of how this is going to to work and what it's gonna look like at the end so I'm just going to change camera angles now so you can see um, a little bit better how we go about using this stuff right then here we go so it's quite difficult for me to find a decent camera angle because I want to do it freehand I've got a vice out um, but trying to put it in there it just feels a bit weird to me uh, and certainly I can't get a good viewing angle for you uh, so I've got the little cotton bob on the top here's the compound uh, at this point guys make sure again you've got eye protection if you're going to do this this stuff flies everywhere and you're going to get it in your eyes if you're not careful at all I've also got my visor on uh, and that's to just magnify a little bit what I'm doing so that I can see it a bit closer up so what I'm going to do is start the machine up, apply some compound to the wheel as you can see and then have a go at the workpiece. I mean instantaneously you already see it starts to get a shine. Now as it's getting a little bit warmer, the compound starts to break down and turn a bit waxy. But then that's good because it's cutting. Now they will get warm, at the moment it's not too bad, I'm not applying too much pressure, but I will confess that I've got pretty poor visibility where I am. Just gently touching on there. Okay, so I need to do a bit more with this grade. But already you can start to see that we're getting the shine you might see sort of it's 
really it's just where it's been wiped it'll need a good clean at the end and the bevel is starting to glint compared to this side and whether you can tell the difference it's remarkably better already but nowhere near complete so i'm just going to do off off air both sides with this compound and then we'll switch over and we'll do the next okay so that's the first compound done and these are the results again a bit poor lighting i'm afraid but it's starting to shine and i'm also doing the bezel now as well while i'm at it so i'm going to do the uh, green compound now exactly the same thing um, We'll just skip through that one, do one coat, I'll show you what it looks like, and move on to the next. So same thing, I've got a, um, a new felt bob. Let's start it up. Trying to get some good compound onto there. And away we go. So we're now starting to get a good shine going on. I'm not sure how well that's coming in, coming through. But a lot better. So again, I'm just going to go over uh, that and the bezel with the green. And we'll move on quickly to the other two. And hopefully we can then see the reward uh, for the work. Now it's not really taking too long, as you can tell. Um, as I said, it shouldn't take very long at all, really, if you've got your prep work right. Uh, what you want to be doing uh, is looking closely here, uh, or whatever you're polishing at, just to make sure that you're getting all the marks out, um, because they will show right at the end. So I'm just going to, like I say, do that with the green, and cut back when we start the next one. Okay, so here we are again. I'm not convinced this is coming through very well on the camera, has to be said. Um, but it does look remarkably better now. It's starting to shine really nicely. So we're going to move off and on to the next compound. And this is the fun one because we start getting into the little cotton wheels. And these will shred all over the place. And I'll just jump straight into it. You've got to be a little bit more careful with these because um, they're going to flex and uh, if you don't hold the piece well or if you slip anywhere you could start hitting the shaft with the case here um, or the actual metal part that it's riveted to there so it's just light strokes now because you're really trying to get a, um, a shine rather than any real uh, cutting into the steel itself So we'll see an explosion of cotton while well, we just try and get some of that onto the wheel. And then
just trying my best to show you, but uh, I think the best will be at the end. So this straight away gives it a very, very good shine. Um, again, I need to go over it a lot more uh, to get the best out of it. And again, do the um, bezel. So I'll, I'll immediately swap to that. We'll quickly do the, the last one, and then we can take the tape off and have a quick look at how it's gonna look. Okay, I've moved the camera a little bit, hopefully to try and <laughs> show the shine in better light, but it's still, it, to my eyes, isn't coming through very well. This is uh, very, very good now. It's, um, well, you'll you'll see at the end, I've, I've got, I'm pretty much speechless as to know what to say. Um, and we're gonna just do the last compound, which is really just buffing it one last time, bring out the final shine. Um, and then it'll be a case of I've got to clean all that off, clean the tape off, put it in the ultrasonic, and then I can do uh, some, probably some nice photographs because that's gonna show it off better. So I've attached the final wheel, which has just got tangled up in my tripod here. And this is gonna feel like it's snowing in here when I start this thing up. So I would estimate really so far, I've been on it probably half an hour, that's all. It doesn't take long at all. Again, I like to keep telling, saying the same thing. It's prep work, prep, 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 if you get it right. With all the, you know, the um, wet and dry and so forth at the, at the beginning, it makes the end part so much easier. So we're gonna go on with the fine one. It's quite difficult to get some on because the compound is hard and um, the cotton is soft. But then it doesn't need much. Okay. Try and find a clear part of my cloth. And there we have it, it's sparkling, um, very good. I won't really need to go over it again with that. Uh, it really doesn't need much at all. You can see that it has slightly discolored, so it was uh, removing a very fine amount. Uh, ultra pleased with that. Um, just gonna look closely with my visor. And yes, I can see no uh, imperfections at all. Uh, so as much as I want to do some nice moody photographs uh, to show off the, the, the work, I will first of all give a glimpse by uh, just trying to take away some of the tape, which is gonna be a nightmare. I can just see it now. So let me remove that first of all, and then show you again. Okay, so here we go. You can kind of see the brush and the polished. And the bevel line isn't too bad. And then if you get the, the bezel, I'm not sure again how that's coming through. but it does give you the contrast completely. So I will take some photographs after I've cleaned it up and we'll uh, take a look at those right, uh, right now. Okay, so here we are, all cleaned and dried, and you can see 
obviously from the photo montage there that it looks pretty good it's not absolutely perfect um but it's certainly better than it was um we've still got some of the the little dinks like this and the one on the, the bezel but i think as some of the comments on the last video suggest that they are little nods to this uh watch's uh, rough life so far um so again hopefully you can see how nice the polishings come out uh, i'm particularly pleased with it there's a few fingerprints every time i touch the thing um but there you go so there's one last thing to try and have a look at um before we can say that all the, the hard work's complete other than trying to put it back together again and that is this dreaded case back so uh, as you can see it's at some point in time in its life this thing was obviously seized and uh, somebody has tried their best to hack the heck out of it to try and get it off the back of the watch um, now I'm not going to get rid of all these scratches but at the moment I can't leave it like that I don't want to send it out looking this poor equally some of them are quite sharp as well so it might do <laughs> it might do some damage to your wrist so um, I'm aware that the video is getting long and this is a really monotonous job uh, but all I'm going to be doing so I've got some emery paper some aluminium oxide emery paper this is 180 grit uh, you can see there and it's hard work I'm literally going to use my finger and I'm going to be scratching away at certainly this this outer ring trying my best to get under as much of that as I can and then once I'm happy I've got to go down through the wet and dry grades again and then try and give it a little bit of a polish just to uh, make it look half decent uh, the top I will give a light skim there's not fortunately there's not too many scratches on there uh, and of course I don't want to take off the, the print um, so I'm going to persevere with this um, probably for another half an hour or so and see how we get on and um, then hopefully I can show you the finished results of this and then we can call this video complete and then all that's left to do is the um, assembly video to put it back in the case uh, the, the movement back in the case and then we can announce the giveaway so here we are i've uh, polished the uh, the case back up as best i can there's still quite a few of those really deep scratches in there uh, but it's it's at least it's smooth and i've just tried to put a bit of a ground finish on the back there uh, just to contrast a, a look uh, that is a little bit bent by the looks of it so i couldn't clean it all up completely um, however it doesn't show because of course it's the case back thank god for that if it was the case front <laughs> i don't think we'd have been able to do this video at all um, but there we go it's taken a long time to get to this stage quite a lot of hours um, in this whole watch so far so i'm going to end this video for now and um, thank you all very much for watching if you've got to the end of this one um, because i'm sure it's not for everybody this particular video um, but if you have thanks very much give me a thumbs up if you liked it consider subscribing uh, if you're new to the channel and of course please leave all your comments below you know that i read all of them and i try and answer as many as i possibly can so i'd love to hear your thoughts what you think to the finish do you think it's any good do you think i've done all right on it um do you think i've spoiled the watch by doing it even who knows i welcome all the feedback um, the next video will be coming along pretty soon because that's going to be the fitting of the crystal for this fixing that stem that we had an issue with earlier on uh, and then that will be it really we can case finally case the movement into the watch and see what it's going to look like for the very first time i'm quite excited to see the finished look um, it always uh, puts a smile on my face at that point uh, and then i'm looking for the next project that's my problem <laughs> Anyway, I'm uh, talking for talking's sake. So catch you all very soon in the next one and stay tuned.